Hello, and welcome to E2E's Business Unusual, a video content series for and by the SME community. Our focus is on helping entrepreneurs navigate this very difficult environment since COVID-19. Today, we're joined by Richard Morris, UK Chief Executive of IWG. Richard, welcome, and thank you for being part of this. Thank you for having me. And just to get the ball rolling, could you tell us a, a little bit about IWG? It, it's, it feels like one of those businesses that, that we all know, um, but, but not familiar uh, in terms of the name. Yes, uh, IWG stands for International Workplace Group, and we are the world's leading provider of flexible workspace in all of its different guises. But generally, we, we provide a, a global network of 4,000 locations where companies can buy workspace on a pay-as-you-go basis. So it's all about providing flexibility in how businesses and companies of all different shapes and size go about fulfilling their space needs. And we do that in 130 countries across a thousand cities. And uh, yeah, we're, we're part of a big trend in how companies consume workspace. Thank you. And so you've got a physical presence uh, and, and also offer services for companies with a, with a physical presence or want employees in, in one place. So how has your business fared since uh, COVID-19? Well, certainly like most businesses, the, the last six to eight weeks have been very intense. Uh, the, the particularly where we've seen in our different markets around the world, a very hard extreme form of lockdown. And that has meant for the, for, for the last several weeks that we've had to face into a difficult period where selling our products and services has been significantly reduced because our sales process traditionally has, has involved businesses actually coming to view our locations. That hasn't been possible. Uh, but generally, we've been focused heavily on making sure that our existing customers are supported. Our network has remained open and available right across the world because we have many customers who are playing an essential role in this difficult time. But our business certainly uh, will see and, and has seen a reduction in demand that, that we have to get ready to, to recover from. If you kind of flash back, so, so you're saying last six to eight weeks have been very tough. But if you go all the way back to, to January, you did all your, your Q4 or your planning in Q4 for uh, 2020, what were you looking forward to achieving for your business uh, this year? Hmm. Well, I mean, it, it's not that long ago, January, but it, it seems like a lifetime ago, of course. We were looking ahead to continuing to invest in growing our business. We are right at the forefront of a very important change, as I said earlier, about how companies go about consuming workspace. And it, it might be that we, we get back onto that growth uh, focus because we think more and more customers will look to have flexibility in how they fulfill their space requirements but we we yeah we you know from a uk point of view as well we were looking forward to getting brexit and everything to do with brexit out of the way um this sort of puts that into perspective now somewhat um but uh, yeah look everything's changed business plans are being rewritten um, but that's what we're here for you know that's what leadership is all about business leadership to uh, government leadership. Obviously, they've announced uh, measures around supporting business. Have you uh, needed or taken advantage of, 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 of any of these measures from the government? We have. Um, and again, like, like every business, trying to work through the impact, first of all, of the crisis on our business and then looking for how to mitigate that impact. M much of what we're doing is what I would call self-help, uh, looking how we can sort of make sure we can serve cash, how we can r run the business in a way that, that keeps it viable uh, through this difficult period, but also where government is offering support, we've taken that up, mainly in the form of the coronavirus job retention scheme, and uh, we've we've furloughed around half of our workforce uh, in line with the fact that 
the restrictions on on travel and, and and the restrictions on businesses being able to operate normally means that we are operating with fewer people right now so i would say that's the main area that we've we've been able to get some support and as as we all hope be able to bring those people off the retention scheme back into their jobs and it sounds like the process has been smooth or smooth kind of relative to everything that's going on is 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 that the case or or have there been kind of areas around the the, the government assistance that that you would tweak uh, again knowing that everyone's kind of doing this in in a in a rush uh, not expecting perfection yeah, I, I think the job retention scheme overall, in terms of how it was set up very quickly and and, and the way in which that has worked in, in terms of companies getting the money that they need to pay the, the, the salaries of people, that seems to have worked pretty well. The, the tweaks that I would make, would have made, maybe would continue to urge government to make, uh, would be around a number of areas. One is something called the small... A business grant fund scheme. This was the £10,000 grant given to small businesses. I, I think it was a shame that the qualification for that grant was attached to whether or not the business had registered physical property premises that was on the local authorities register as a, as a premises that attracted small business rate relief. I know that there has to be some way of administering these things quickly. But generally, it means that a lot of small businesses have missed out on that grant of £10,000 unintentionally, I'm sure, unintentionally. And maybe that's something I would urge government to look at to see where there are some small businesses that really should have received the, the grant but, but haven't been able to claim it. And then secondly, around business rates, something that is very important to us. We, we operate hundreds of locations, office type buildings in the UK. Um, we think that there's a strong argument for looking at business rates, abatement or, or, or suspension across a broader range of industries other than just things like hospitality, retail and leisure. Thank you for that. And, and just even if those changes and those tweaks kind of can't be made to, to, to policy, obviously the way government um, engages with business, engages with the economy has has changed, mm -hmm. um, and the taxpayer is likely to to uh, view uh, business needing to reciprocate on the other end of this. Um, mm -hmm. How do you think that uh, the expectations of the taxpayer of the voter uh, will change uh, of what they have for business? I think in a number of ways and businesses in, in, including the one uh, that I represent IWG we, we recognize the fact that there need to be significant decisions taken by companies regarding things like dividend payments share buyback programs executive pay so that it's very clear that businesses are taking responsibility themselves without having to be asked. Or I think looking further ahead, again, you know, the, the idea that there will need to be some kind of economic recovery that involves getting uh, uh, public debt under control. I think everybody recognizes that companies will have a big part to play both in terms of thinking about tax, or, although never wanting that to be something that stifles investment and innovation, uh, we need a balanced approach to, to tax. And uh, we also need to look at what key workers actually means in our society going forward. I, I think one thing we'll look back on at the end of this crisis is that there are lots of people doing jobs every day in a very, very wide variety of different types of business, different types of industry and sector that are absolutely fundamental and pivotal to how we exist, how we live our day-to-day -day lives. And, and I think there'll be a sort of a recalibration. And, and just moving on a, a little bit from that, you're, you're, you're talking about people and human beings. And um, we, you know, when we talk about business, easy to forget made up of many, many humans. 
Um, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and going on to a uh, section more on mental health and, and burnout, um, this sudden change has been compared to the grieving process. Uh, where would mm-hmm. you where would you say you are in those five stages of grief? Uh, it's a good question. I think. Um, I mean, look. I I, I think for me. It, it, people might compare it to, to grief. I, I think there are some similarities around the fact that th- this happens so suddenly, and 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 it, and is such a shock to 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 everybody. Uh, that certainly caused uh, confusion. Uh, that's probably been that that I would say the, the for me the main sort of personal emotion that I've experienced certainly in the early stages of this unfolding what was just confusion about what happens next the uncertainty about what comes next has, has been one of the most difficult things to deal with um i suppose you know i think once part of that grieving cycle is anger um i, I think i felt elements of anger over over the last few weeks around the the way in which we need to have a uh, you know very transparent approach to, to how the situation is being handled uh, by government um, and you know I think there are lots of things that government our government has done well over the last several weeks I, I think there are some things they've done less well and um, you know that that's probably something that has played on my mind uh, a little bit uh, for sure, right now, you know, for me, frustration is 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 growing in relation to the fact that we need much, much greater clarity as quickly as possible from government about what does restarting and reopening the economy actually look like. But- and on a, a related note, being a, a leader in uh, in any business. Uh, during good times uh, is stressful uh, during a black swan event such as this even more so are there specific measures things you were doing to kind of help manage your own mental health and, and stress level through this time I think I, luckily I, I'd say I'm fairly sort of calm and and uh, resilient any way but I've definitely found that it's important to take some time to decompress on a daily basis. It's very important. So I think to, um, you know, after an intense or or very busy day, I'm going walking a lot more than I did previously. I'm lucky enough to be able to, to, to walk to some nice places near where I live. And that's something that I've built into my routine gives me time to think and reflect. And I've also been able to spend more time getting uh, 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 physically more fit and also spending more time uh, with my uh, with my family. And, you know, they're things that actually, if you like, I've, I've had more time to th- consider doing off the back of the fact that I'm largely working from home, thing that as a society, uh, we we really really need to pull together to to get everybody uh, through the mental uh, health impact of, of this whole situation. It, it will could be every bit as big as the physical health impact, and and I, I think we need to really ready ourselves as uh, employers and as as a society as a whole to to help people uh, recover uh, over the coming years. Then just moving on to your team and employees, obviously you mentioned some are are furloughed, others are are not, but how are you, and assuming a lot of working from home, others aren't able to, but how are you keeping that team spirit alive? How are you keeping employees engaged? I I think it's a, it's a really important thing given the amount of either remote working or, or temporary um, uh, non-working through the furlough process. One of the things that we did as a company early on was was recognize, first of all, the need to keep connected to people on the job retention scheme to make sure that they continue to feel part of the business, continue to feel part of the team 
and emotionally engaged in in what's happening in the company even though they're not they're not working we've done a lot to communicate both um, through telephone and, and video conferencing uh, with our team members who who are furloughed making sure that they're ready to come back into into work as as soon as we judge as appropriate otherwise we've made the most of technology like a lot of businesses you know we, we've sort of accelerated what what was already in place and expanded more than ever before the use of video conferencing we, we maintain our focus on communication you can't over communicate things things are evolving quickly there's naturally now going to be anxiety for many businesses regarding future job security the fact that a lot of businesses are going to have to go through a period of restructuring is inevitable in many industries so i, I think just continual focus on regular honest transparent timely communication there's something that you've seen a, a member of your team do either as a professional or, or just another human being uh, that that's impressed you during this uh, again very difficult period i think for me the thing that gives me huge pride is the fact that we said at the very beginning of this crisis that we have hundreds of thousands of customers using our network and many of which are very vital to the whole national effort against the pandemic for example we we have ambulance police services using our network we, we have uh, social care and care home providers using it we, we were very keen at the beginning to make sure that all of our people were engaged around the need to keep our network open and available for customers but what i find really amazing is the the, the commitment and the professionalism and the, and the dedication with which our team members in iwg all across the world and in the uk rose to that challenge Fabulous. And then as we uh, begin to, to, to close uh, this, this interview, um, just want to focus on some of the positives. And, you know, one, and you've already mentioned kind of a couple of changes, if you like, even in your routine, taking that time uh, to walk, to clear your head. Um, but are there things that you've noticed you've done differently or as a business you've done differently? And again, you mentioned remote working and video, but anything you'll take from this uh, and apply when we get to the, uh, the next normal or at least out of lockdown. There will be a very profound and permanent change in how people work. And I think that will manifest itself in a number of ways. Certainly people will not necessarily be bunching together in crammed, densely occupied buildings. Uh, for a long time to come, if ever again, frankly, um, because there'll be a continued focus on health and well-being. Uh, there'll be a continued focus on the fact that people can be as productive, if not more productive, working remotely. But, but this has really accelerated the adoption of uh, working remotely and in a distributed way. So what, what I would expect to see is, you know, lots of businesses shedding uh, their uh, large portfolios of office space and actually having people not necessarily all working from home because home working doesn't work for a lot of people um, but but working more remotely working closer to home not having to get on crowded commuter uh, public transport um, and, and and that will be something that, that lasts a, a, a long long time the final question when lockdown ends what are you looking forward to achieving both for your business, but, but also as a, another human being? What, what do you look forward to doing? Oh, um, it's easier to answer the, the last part of that question, I think. I think we'll all be ready to just sort of do things that we love doing that we haven't been able to do for five, six weeks now in the UK. And, and that's mainly around friendships and family and being able to spend time with loved ones from a business point of view 
we we are here and getting ready to support our customers as they go through a period of change reconfiguration restructuring and our network of on-demand workspace is something that we think will play a big part in enabling companies to have their people work differently this thing i was saying a moment ago about remote working why travel into central london or have all your people traveling into central london if you can work from one of our locations thank you very very much uh, for this on behalf of e to e really appreciate your time and obviously wish you your family and your team the very best thank you very much indeed thank you